question comes up, you have this setup. And then you add the little mizzen in the back, or a bigger mizzen in the back. What's it now? The term for a sailboat that has two masts, well there's a couple, the schooner, catch, and yawl. A schooner has a taller second mast. So this would be a schooner, because the second mast is taller than the first one. Schooners are, in my opinion, the most beautiful boat there is. Like, that is just... They're gorgeous. Sadly, no one makes them. It's, it's a shame, because they're just absolutely beautiful. The other ones that people do make are catches and yawls. Once again, like my little tirade about cutter and sloop, how it was, you know, originally based on where's the mast on the boat, and now it's gone to one or two head sail business. Catches and yawls has sadly gone from the old definition, which was actually pretty cut and clear on what it was, except for some gray areas that came come in, to the sad but modern version, which is big mizzen, catch, small mizzen, y'all. The old way, like the classic definition of catch or y'all, depends on the rudder post. Not the rudder, but the rudder post itself. This ball of twine that I've been using this whole time as rigging is now a rudder. Coming up, so this will be the rudder post. The old definition, if the mizzen is forward of the rudder post, it's a catch. If the mizzen is aft of the rudder post, it's a yaw. This is regardless and irrespective of how tall is the mizzen. That does not matter at all in the old definition. It was simply yaw, catch. That's it. The problem with that old definition is you'll see yaws with giant mizzens and you can have a catch teeny tiny little mizzen here. It gets a little dicey at a distance to be like, oh yes, catch or yaw, because you can't see the rudder because it's in the water. A trick that I've found that is really helpful at spotting yaw versus catch at a great distance, and this applies to like most boats of like, you know, normal size. Once you get like the 100 plus foot boats, whole nother animal, normal boats, up to say 60 feet or so, the catch will always have a stay that runs from the masthead of the mizzen to the masthead of the main, or the main mast. And that stay that runs right here is called a triadic stay. If you have that, it's a catch. If you don't have that, it's a yaw. Because a yaw is always set really far aft, and they're completely independent spars. Like, they do not share rigging at all. A catch it comes back, you have a triadic that comes here, and then you'll have split back stays that come down. And that is your catch. A yaw sits back here, and it will have its own stays, and it's completely independent. The nice thing of a yaw is, say the mizzen gets lost, like it, it falls and got demasted, and you no longer have your mizzen, you have an entirely intact rig. If a catch loses the mizzen, you just lost your backstay. Not so good. N not good for either of them, but just that's that's kind of the big thing. What is the point of having an extra sail back there? I mean, why why not just have all this be main instead of you know main comes to here because the main the boom can't go past the mizzen. So what's what's the purpose of this? Well, it's really simple. It's the same reason for splitting up the headsail area on a cutter versus a sloop. So you get these giant sails, like you'll see like the wallies, they're you know over a hundred feet long and a sloop, and it's this huge head sail and a huge mainsail. And they have hydraulic winches and all these things because it's too much to handle. Like you cannot physically handle those things alone. They are just immense and the forces on them are just ridiculous. So break it up. Have a bunch of small sails that are then easier to manage and you can manage each sail alone by hand. And it's actually really common on schooners to not even have a winch on the deck because everything is such a small sail that you can easily do it by hand. So that is uh, the main reason for catches and yawls is it breaks up the main into two mains so then you can reef one a little, you can reef the other, you have such a huge amount of versatility to your rig, your, your sail plan while you're sailing. The other huge advantage of having a mizzen is you then have more ability to trim everything. Like you now have three or four sails, depending if you have a uh, staysail as well. So you have all these sails so you can fine tune and really control things. And 
lastly, a yaw has, like, the tiniest of tiny masts. Like, it, it's, it's puny, and it's teeny tiny out here. It, it really doesn't actually provide any drive to the boat at all. It's, it's actually a detriment to have a mizzen on a yaw because it's so small and provides no power, but it is still windage. So why? Well, if you lose your rudder, I read about a case where they sailed 800 miles back to shore steering by the mizzen because instead of a rudder in the water, they had a rudder in the air. That is incredible. So that's, that's really awesome. Racing boats used to be catches and yawls, and the yawl especially. The yawl was actually like favored for racing because it was a rule cheater. At the time, the rules were, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong on this because I, my interest in racing is hmm, cool, cool. So the rules were uh, the head sail and the main sail. Those are the ones that were counted. The yawl did not count the mizzen at all. Like. All this sail area, which is nothing, was free. So they, they didn't get penalized in their, their uh, handicap rating. So all this was extra sail area. And the reason that all this was extra sail area is this did nothing. Nothing. The sailors would run a sail from the top of the mizzen to the base of the mast. And now this, this did a lot. So they'd have a staysail... Uh, they'd have a Mizzen Spinnaker, Mizzen Genoa's, like they had all sorts of sails that went here and gave a whole lot of power. And all of this, actually, all of this little bit back here too, all of this was free extra sail area that was not counted in their rating. So that was why y'alls were a thing. And our boat is actually an old rule beater from the Whitbread race. Uh, it was designed in the, I think it was mid-60s or so, mid-60s, early 60s, around there, our hull was built in 1968, and it was actually a yawl, and the previous owner took the mizzen off because he got really old, and it was just work, and he got tired of working with it and maintaining it, so he took it off, but the chain plates are still there, so it's kind of cool, and I've always toyed with the idea of putting the mizzen back because my second favorite boat is a yaw because I just think they're really pretty. Uh, that's just me, and Maddie doesn't think that the prettiness is worth all the work and cost that would go into making it a y'all again. But anyway, so y'alls were just cheaters, and and that's it. So that's that's how y'alls came to be. Now, one actual advantage that uh, y'all has for a cruising boat is this little mizzen. So when you anchor and the winds are weird and the currents weird and the boats like flopping all over the place you set your mizzen with the sail and it's out there and you have this giant air rudder here again at anchor and it keeps you pointed into the wind and it, it's just it's really nice in that sense and they actually call those sails riding sails because you ride your anchor with that sail so that is that and the whole steering if your rudder is lost business that, that's nice of a y'all uh, but other than that, they offer no actual advantage. Now, the problem with catches and yawls in any multi-masted sailing boat is going to windward. They Not so good. So, the wind comes in. For a sail to work, it needs to have fresh, clean air. So the air has to come in. And the same issue with the, cat, with the cutter. So, the air comes in. If you only have two sails, you need clean air for this guy and clean air for this guy air comes in, you're good. You can go like really close to the wind. It can be, you know, really close because it gets in there and it works. You now have two head sails. Well, now you can't go as close to the wind because this one has good air and this guy's got, you know, some dirty air from the head sail. So, you have to, you know, fall off the wind a little. So now the wind's coming from this way. Same issues going on. I'm going to see if I can get this to stand up in here. Air is coming in, you know, nice and good, all's good. But to get air for this guy way back here, you have to be like really off the wind to get it any wind, uh, to get it any good air. So what ends up happening, to not have your mizzen be flopping around while you're, er, well, the correct term is luffing, to not have your mizzen luffing while you're going to windward, a lot of times you actually have to over trim the mizzen, which then means that it's just the big air break back there. So it's actually slowing you down. 
So a lot of times you'll see catches and yalls and all. When they're going to windward, they'll actually just drop their mizzen to get it out of the equation, and then they go to windward as if they were a sloop or a cutter, depending how everything else is set up. Off the wind, like beam reach, stuff like that, they are a champ because you have, say, you have this setup. You have one, two, three, four sails. Three now. One, two, three, and four sails, and if you're really ballsy, five sails. Like, all the sail area, it's a lot of power. You're really going to get moving. So beam reach, broad reach, these boats are the best. Uh, going up when, not so much. So, that is the big difference between catch and yaw. Now, I did mention the whole gray area in the historic definition. It's, it's very clear in the whole business about the rudder post, you know, catch and yaw, if it's fore or aft of the rudder post. Now, the problem is, you get these old boats with transom hung rudders. There is no possible way that the mizzen can be aft of the rudder post unless it's like out on the boomkin. It's, it's just not happening. Oh, and curiosity, how do you guys pronounce it? I've heard bumpkin, boomkin, and boomkin. Uh, I'm just curious how you guys pronounce it wherever you're from. So let me know the pronunciation and where it is that they pronounce it that way. The, the rudder post is back here, so unless the mizzen is on the bumpkin, past the rudder post, there's no way it could possibly be a yaw by the classical definition. Yet you will see yaws that are ancient, like over a hundred years old, back when the definitions actually mattered, and there are yaw, even though they have a transom hung rudder, and the mizzen is quite big. Now, the cool thing is they will not have that triadic stay. It'll be a self-standing second mast, no connection to the first mast. And then the ones that are catches, like this, they will have the triadic stay, which kind of looks like that, sort of, from a distance. So, that is the, uh, the old definition, and this is just a little thing that I've noticed. I haven't seen it explicitly written that catches have triadics, yaws do not have triadics, but I have never seen a yaw with a triadic, and every catch I've seen, except one super yacht, which is just huge, they all have triadics. And with that, I think we have covered all the, the rigging parts of this, and our next thing will be to make some sails. And if any of you have kids that are probably like 30 years old or so, and they are currently living with you in the basement because their boat is somewhere else and they have no home, uh, <laughs> my mom donated some sheets for this video. So we're literally going to be making our sails and sheets out of sheets. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.